قيمه لونه هالخيد ما وانطاني رفعه حب ابو اليمه انا اختصر كل عمري باللاغ دخر قابري دخر قابري Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Late Night Talk with me, your host, Ahmed Ali. And uh, once again, we do send our condolences to Al-Sahab al-Asr al-Zaman. May Allah hasten his reappearance. For we are in a month of Muharram, the month of sorrow, the month of grief. The month where Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam suffered so much for us to be here, for us to disseminate the knowledge, for us to actually live our lives. And, you know, tonight... Um, as we began yesterday and, and the, the nights before, we said that every night of Muharram is dedicated to, you know, from the first 10 days of Muharram is dedicated to a specific personality or multiple personalities. Um, yesterday we talked about Ruqayya uh, being in the Arab world, uh, sorry, uh, Fatima and Alina in the Arab world, Ruqayya in the Persian uh, communities, and Sakina in the Indo-Pak communities. Now today is the night of Muslim ibn Aqil. A lot of the people who are commemorated in these nights either died in Muharram, you know, the majority of them, either died in Muharram or after. But there's one personality that died before the massacre of Ashura, and that's Muslim ibn Aqil. You know, in, in the month of the Hajjah, where everybody is gathered around in Arafah and Hajj, celebrating the days of Eid, unknowing the massacres and the oppressions and the betrayals which occurred in this month, the Hajjah. Now, the Hajjah is, is one month, as everyone uh, may know, it's, it's, it's a month before Muharram. And honestly, not a lot of people know about what happened in the Hajjah. Imam al Hussein, alayhi salam, when everything couldn't get any worse, Yazid ibn Muawiyah sent a letter to all his generals uh, to behead Hussein, even if he was holding on to the cloth of the Kaaba, even if he was holding on to the Kaaba to behead him. And Imam Hussein needed support because, as everyone knows, Imam Hussein did not pledge allegiance to a corrupt leader so-called Muslim leader, uh, as many still today, uh, it's a shocker to, to, to hear that, many still today say, may Allah be pleased with Yazid. It's unfortunate that people have come to this stage that a lot of people are, you know, s saying, uh, may Allah, you know, have mercy on an individual who almost wiped out humanity. You know, a lot of people talk about the Holocaust, talk about Hitler, how bad he was, you know, for killing the Jews. A Holocaust happened 1,400 years ago where people were massacred. A genocide happened. People were massacred in Medina, in Mecca. Mecca was looted. Medina was looted after the massacre of Karbala. Now, Imam al Hussein knew this. When Yazid said to his generals, even if you see Hussein holding on to the Kaaba, behead him. Because he didn't want to pledge allegiance. So he sent Muslim ibn Aqil, his cousin, to the people of Kufa to take their allegiance. So they can support him in his uprise against the, the, the corruption. Muslim ibn Aqil, you know, he loved being and accompanying the Imam because all his life he was alongside Imam Hussein, Imam Al Hassan, Al Abbas, uh, Ja'far, everyone. He was alongside everyone. So to be away from your cousin, because Aqil is the brother of Ali ibn Talib alayhi salam, so that makes Imam Al Hussein and Muslim Aqil and the other brothers cousins. 
So Imam Al Hussein alayhi salam sends Muslim Naqid to Kufa. Muslim Naqid arrives. A lot of thousands, according to narrations, thousands of people pledged allegiance to Muslim Naqid and Al Hussein alayhi salam, and they sent letters to Imam Al Hussein to come to Kufa. We're here for your support. We're going to support you. We're with you. Muslim Naqid writes to Imam Al Hussein alayhi salam. He says, "The hearts and swords of the people of Kufa are with you." But there's a very interesting line that we need to focus on. Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, when he sends his letter with Muslim Naqil to the people of Kufa, he says, I have sent to you my brother, my cousin, and my trustee. His representative in Kufa was his brother. His cousin and his trustee, he could have mentioned anything, he could have mentioned, he could have said, you know, I've sent you the, the, the bravest warrior in my army, I've sent you this and this and this. No, but he focused on three aspects. Brotherhood, relation with his cousin, and being trustworthy. Because the mission of Imam Hussain alayhi salam was based on trustworthiness. The mission of Imam Hussain is his, his determination, as we'll get to talk about, his determination to stop the corruption that was happening at that time was based on trustworthiness, was based on the hearts and the strong hearts of those individuals who are willing to give up everything for what? For Islam. Who are willing to give up, to give up everything for their fellow citizen. As we see today, there are many patriots and, and, and a lot of people who are, you know, they're, they're strong hearted, that they care for their country. They will sacrifice everything for their country. And when they die in pursuing that goal, they are labeled, they are labeled as martyrs. Yet Imam al Hussein alayhi salam 1400 years ago sacrificed not only himself. But he said, even if the lives of my family was on the line, I would still stay on the line of saving humanity and saving civilization. Tonight, inshallah, I want to talk about representation. An individual who is sent by the third Imam of Ahl Bayt, not only that, the fifth individual of Ahl Kisa, not only that, Sayyid Shabab Ahl al Jannah, the master of the youth of paradise, and not only that, but the Prophet says, He is myself. Husaynu minni wa ana min. The Prophet is basically saying, Wherever Husayn is, I am there. So when Imam al Husayn is in Karbala, the Prophet is in Karbala. When Imam al Husayn is in Kufa, it means Prophet Muhammad is in Kufa. Yet, Imam al Hussein chooses his cousin, his brother, and his trustee, Muslim ibn Aqil, to be his representative in Kufa, to take the allegiance of the people of Kufa. So everything goes along. Everyone sends letters to Imam Hussein alayhi salam. But how did Muslim ibn Aqil represent Imam al Hussein alayhi salam? Some may wonder. How did he represent him? In what way? Muslim Naqil, when he first arrived in Kufa, people knew him for his bravery, just like Imam Hussain alayhi salam. People understood the values of Islam through the characteristics of Muslim. You know, when it came to prayer, Muslim Naqil was the first one to be in the mosque. And what's so beautiful about how uh, the, the life of Muslim uh, came to be, a lot of people do mention Muslim Naqil on this night. And uh, it's, it's unfortunate that even if we go through the books of history, we won't find a lot of biography. If we dissect history and the biographies written on various uh, individuals, we won't find a lot written on Muslim Naqil. Now, why is that? 
We won't find a lot written on personalities like Habib ibn Mudahar, Muslim ibn Awsajah, and a lot of the companions that were with Imam Hussain alayhi salam. Muslim ibn Aqeel was an individual who fought alongside Imam Hussain alayhi salam in almost all the battles with his father, Ali ibn Talib alayhi salam. Well, he was known to be brave. And a lot of misconceptions, I just want to clear this up, a lot of misconceptions have been raised in regards to Muslim Naqil's father, Aqil. According to some narrations, he wasn't as pure intention as Ali ibn Talib. Let us not forget that Ali ibn Talib is an infallible, he's an imam, he's a leader. Aqil was just a brother. We're not saying that Aqil wasn't as loyal to Islam as his brother, but there's degrees. Ali ibn Talib was at the highest degree, and you, of course you have companions, brothers who did not possess the same belief and, 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 and the same high understanding of Islam and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the infallibles. You won't find. So Aqil, you know, and, and if Aqil wasn't that individual to be trusted, Ali ibn Talib would not request from his brother, who was also a genealogist, as we have today, we have genealogy. He was a genealogist. He knew every single family that was in Medina, in Kufa. And when Ali ibn Talib wanted a, 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 a mother for his children and wanted to have boys and brave warriors to aid Imam Hussain alayhi salam, the first one he went to was Aqil, the father of Muslim. So if Imam Ibn, if, if there was no trust in Aqil, Ali ibn Abi Talib would never have went to Aqil and told him, you know what, I want a woman that can give me brave warriors. Her ancestry proves and just pours of bravery, of courage. And of course, altruism, because Imam Ali ibn Talib Islam wanted that selfless stand from his brothers, from Imam Hussain's brothers, and which he got. Now, just to clear that misconception around uh, Aqil, father of Muslim, Aqil, you know, because we don't want to, uh, you know, th throw stones that really might hurt us and hurt <coughs> the personalities, the Islamic personalities that really should be offered respect for aiding Imam Ibn Talib or for aiding uh, many individuals in Islam. However, going back to Muslim Naqil, tonight we want to talk about representation. You know, we find in the Quran that a Muslim is the embodiment of Allah's command. A true Muslim is the embodiment, not any Muslim. Don't, don't get me wrong when I say Muslim. Not any Muslim is the full embodiment of the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which they should be. But representing Islam means that when you go to work, the first characteristic that you should characterize yourself with is what? It's trustworthiness. Like Hassan alayhi salam said, I am sending you my trustee, Muslim Naqil. The first characteristic you know, I've lived in the West, I've lived in Canada for the majority of my life. And I went to work, and I went to university, I went to high school, elementary. And when it came to being trustworthy, individuals will either fail or they will succeed. So representing Islam means that when I go to school, I have Islam at the top of my head. Because any act that I do is not going to reflect on me individually. We all, you know, we, we, we all see the news. If a certain person who is brown, who looks Arab, and has an Arab name, supposedly he's Muslim, goes out and shoots people, they're not going to say, you know, Flan Malik, Flan Abdul Rahman, whatever their names are, shot people. No, no, no. They're going to say an extremist Muslim one around a shot. We're viewed as individuals who represent Islam, the ambassadors of Islam, because the words we utter 
means that we stand for Islam. So it's our responsibility to hold together the representation of Islam and to portray Islam the way it should be portrayed. Many individuals across the world have established initiatives in the honor of Islam and in the honor of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. And trust me when I say that these minor events that we've established, these groups, these initiatives, these campaigns are the same campaigns that Imam Hussein alayhi salam would have promoted 1400 years back when he said Muslim Na'aqil. Because Muslim Na'aqil was a campaign on himself. He was campaigning for Imam Hussein alayhi salam. So when we campaign in the name of Imam al-Hussein, we are acting and we are walking in the footsteps of Muslim Na'aqil. And that's the most important thing we need to keep in our mind. That if we take individuals like Muslim Na'aqil, Han ibn Urwa, Habib ibn Mudahir, Maytham al-Tammar, individuals who you know, gave the selfless stand for Islam and for Imam Hussein alayhi salam, we will be like them if we truly understand the meaning of representing Imam Hussain al Islam, representing Islam in general, and specifically Imam Hussain al Islam. We'll get to talk about more about the, ter the, the termination of Imam Hussain al Islam and you know how everything came together and went against Muslim Naqi and the betrayals he faced in Kufa, but that will be after. The short break and uh, we do have a very uh, nice insert a nice uh, no halatmiya uh, ready for you so inshallah i'll take you into that vibe hussein virji uh maulai maulai i think it's called uh, so uh, to that and we'll be back very short Sometimes miss my fast and sometimes miss my prayer. I am your creature, Lord. Have mercy on my soul. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Uh, it was very beautiful to see uh, how you know international procession from around the world uh, gather in the holy city of Karbala uh, to honor Imam Hussein alayhi salam and to uh, have. Uh, you know that vibe within themselves uh, because honestly uh, the uh, these are people from uh, Turkey who uh, you know crossed countries and thousands of miles just to get uh, to uh, uh, and Azerbaijan as well uh, you know just to come to Karbala and commemorate these nights because Karbala is something different for the people uh, that haven't come to Karbala it's something uh, you know, uh, amazing. You just, you just have to be here and witness it for yourself uh, during the month uh, of Muharram. And you know, uh, as you can see behind me, yesterday I got a message from someone uh, that asked me, uh, "The view behind you is that real, or is that 
you know, green screen. I don't know. I said, no, no, it's, it's real. The, uh, the dome, the minarets, everything behind me uh, is pure. This is Abu al-Fadl Abbas that we're um, coming to you live uh, from. And it's uh, amazingly beautiful. Uh, and uh, one of the most beautiful views, honestly, on this planet uh, is right behind me. Uh, and it, it does, it's so beautiful that it looks fake. Uh, but but it, it is it is real. Uh, but we do have Brother Muhammad Taqi uh, from the UK, a poet uh, and a very good friend of ours. Uh, Assalamu alaikum, Brother Muhammad. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Habibi, how are you? Alhamdulillah, how are you, Brother? Allah is alaikum, inshaAllah. Uh, now, Brother, today's, uh, before we get into poetry and before uh, you take us away into that, uh, you know, griefful uh, mood, uh, of uh, Muharram, I want to talk about uh, the topic of today, and that's uh, representing. Uh, a lot of people do represent Islam in the West, but do a lot of people represent Imam Al Hussein in the West? It's a very good question, brother, and I think one that's uh, quite often thought and contemplation. I think Imam Hussein came with a stand and with a very specific message, he revived the true message of Islam that was dying out, um, that the Prophet Muhammad had brought. Um, and I think that this message is, once again, we're losing the essence of the message of Islam. Um, we, as mentioned, that we are all ambassadors for Islam. Anything that happens um, where the individual is a Muslim, we are seen to represent the whole religion. I think the true element yeah. and essence of yes. The message of Karbala and of Imam Hussein and of Islam is is one that we really need to ensure that we go back and really focus on and revolutionize ourselves and try and dig deep and each of us individually but collectively as Muslims need to, need to try and and consider and go back and really think about how we yeah. can re-implement the the true meanings of of the Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam. Yes. Definitely, and, and one of the most beautiful, uh, you know, d to, to, to add to what you said, uh, the most beautiful thing about uh, you know, presenting Rosh Hashanah Islam, uh, and uh, really, you're deep down, you feel like you're continuing the message of Muslim Na'aqeel, which we're commemorating tonight. And the most beautiful thing about Muslim is he was entitled the trustee of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. He was entitled the brother because honestly, to Ahlul Bayt, when they call someone brother, it's something very special. But when they call someone trustee, that's to you know the, the highest degree of loyalty um, that individual has. Al Bayt it really and really the loyalty and the the sacrifice he made, and Imam Hussein knew the sacrifice he would make, and how he really um, dug deep to try and rally up the 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 men of Kufa for for Imam Hussein yes. to support Imam Hussein because he really believed and, and stayed loyal even until um, the final moments of his life where mm -hmm. he was um, he was captured and even until that moment he refused to um, to uh, go against Imam Hussein he stayed loyal to to Imam Hussein you know that's how much loyalty he had for the message of Islam and he was so sure and he had that much yaqeen that if Hussein was and that was all that mattered to him. His love didn't matter. Mm -hmm. I mean, his children, you know, they, you know, their lives didn't matter. You said, sacrifice everything you have for, you know, for, for Imam Hussein. And yes. that's why the true, you know, as you say, he was called the trustee and the loyal one. Yeah. Because of, you know, he, he really showed these traits throughout his life. Yes. But especially in the last few, in the last few months. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the most beautiful thing, uh, about uh, these nights uh, is that we get to commemorate and on the day of Ashra you commemorate to everyone but in these 10 nights uh, they're specified for certain individuals and tonight it's for Muslim Na'aqil uh, now have you, uh, you know, gathered or uh, written any poems for Muslim Ibn Aqil and if you have you know, it, w it would be an honor uh, to, to, to listen to one yes um, Habibi I have uh, mm. One specific poem about um, Sayyid Muslim ibn Aqil, yes. um, and I, I have some other poems I would like to share with you as yes, well. Yes, definitely. Um, I will start the one on on Muslim, um, which really goes through 
um, a bit of the story of his final, you know, the final days, yes. and and you know, it just takes you on the journey. Before I'd like to then continue on with uh, a few other poems, inshallah. Inshallah, inshallah. Bismillah. A message to Hussein in the form of a letter was conveyed. A large number of supporters in Kufa he had gained. But within days, just a few remained. People like Muslim and Hani ibn Urwa retained. He was sent by Hussein as a trustee to gather support. But the Kufans by Ibn Ziyad, they had been bought. A whole army waited for him, Hussein had thought. If only he knew that they had sold him short. Now Muslim and his companions were being tracked down. Now Muslim and his companions were being tracked down. Ubaidullah had planted spies all around town. They would report back to him with what they'd found. And one by one, one by Hussein's one, loyal supporters, loyal supporters they, would they would hound. His affairs he settled in order to try and call for leave. leave. That letter that he sent letter Hussein desperately tried, tried to retrieve. The closed city, city gates made, made this task impossible, impossible for Muslim to, Muslim to achieve. achieve. And now tired and, now and, tired and hungry, and roaming, roaming the streets, streets. Muslim did Muslim grieve. grieve. He knocked on a door, on and, a door for and for he water asked. he asked. So I then questioned why this man, his face he had masked. When Muslim revealed his identity, she welcomed him in. But her wretched son diverged, divulged to Ibn Ziyad, who lay therein. The next morning, soldiers surrounded the house. Soldiers surrounded the house the next morning. Muslim, you must surrender, they began calling. But he was trained by Ali, and that was their final warning. He emerged from the house, a valiant lion, and started warring. But Muslim was caught. But Muslim was eventually caught and taken to Ibn Ziyad. He was bleeding, and his body badly scarred. He told them to Muslim from the roof discard. But till his last breath, Hussein, he didn't disregard. But till his last breath, Hussein, he didn't disregard. Muhammad wa Muhammad. And the, it, it's all beautiful, but the last, mo the, 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 the last word, uh, line of poetry, uh, is really beautiful because, uh, you know, it shows you're actually portraying uh, the thoughts of Muslim because, you know, on that time, he requested from the guards uh, to you know his his last moments last few seconds he requested from the guards uh, before they behead him and throw him off uh, the, the roof of the castle to let him pray two rak'at and send his salams to Imam Hussain alayhi salam uh, and you know when, while he was doing that everything was you know blackened out for Muslim and you know he, he was beheaded uh, and honestly it's, it just breaks the heart in these nights uh, that we have to remember uh, an individual like Muslim Naqid. Um, I mean, brother, can you bless us with another uh, poem? I know we uh, we have uh, quite a few time, uh, so if you can bless us with another poem, uh, that would be very uh, very blessing. Yes, Habib. Um, I have one poem which um, I will read, and then if we have time, I have a final. Inshallah. This poem is entitled "The Best of Education." Um, the the background to the story is. Whether we've really, as we were saying, taken from Imam Hussain's message um, what really intended us to, or have we really the true message and the, the essence? Um, there's a speech I heard, um, a clip recently by a sheikh, who was saying that if, if somebody came and told us that the history of Karbala, there was one very small detail that we have wrong or slight um, was inaccurate, would that really shatter our faith? in what we believe about Karbala. But the truth is that for a lot of us it may, which which shouldn't be the case. The, the truth is that Imam Hussain's message would come down to the small historical facts that may or may not have happened on the day, but come down to, you know, why he made his stand. Yeah. You know, and have we really taken on his key lessons into our lives? Beautiful. So, yeah, that's that's the main messages of this poem is the best of education is called. That's beautiful. Um, 
beautiful lessons emanate from Karbala. If only Hussein's sacrifice, we could truly comprehend, comprehend that moment that moment when his blessed when his head was decapitated and his soul did ascend. Did ascend. If its soul returns to a Lord who is truly pleased and enter his garden. But this Hussein didn't get butchered to attain stardom. His martyrdom, not a tale, just to make generations weep and cry. But rather to take lessons from his stand to exemplify. If we knew how much of Hussein we have neglected, we could never testify to his mother, your son, we respected. A man who couldn't possibly align with falsehood. In the face of death, he refused and firmly stood. But have we absorbed this trait into our lives? I look in the mirror, but don't see someone to this goal strives. Hussein taught us the value of sincere prayers. As he stood on those desert plains in front of his slayers, still I struggle to raise my head from my pillow, no matter how loud my fajr alam does bellow. The attitude towards oppression he made clear. The repercussions of a tyrant a true believer will never fear. But what have I done to fight against today's oppressive forces? Because my silence on these issues the tyrant's regime reinforces. Total submission to the will of God he demonstrated. Not once did Hussein complain over what Allah had fated. But I find myself questioning the Almighty over the smallest of tribulations. Woe be unto me, for I am, dis for I am a disobedient creation. A revolution within our souls we do require. Take from Hussein's message and see the magic transpire. Doors we never knew existed will swing open, and only then the gate to the Twelfth Prince will reopen, and only then will the gate to the Twelfth Prince reopen. Uh, sorry for that, you were cut off uh, a, a bit just before the end, uh, but we do understand, you know, it, the lessons from Karbala, uh, they all come together and, and they teach us uh, one beautiful thing about Karbala uh, and that's to care about the person next to you, care about the generations and establishing something uh, that not, not only you will benefit from, but the generations to come will have so much an honor for you. And you know, it's, it's beautifully said um, uh, in your words and honestly, one of the most uh, heroic things that we see or the, that emanate from Karbala uh, is the selfless sacrifice, is the individual who really surrounds everyone around him through his determination, his passion uh, for humanity and serving uh, humanity. And I don't find anyone through history, hands down, anyone through history that did it like Hussein alayhi salam because he gave up everything. And as you mentioned in that poem. Then yes, very true. The, there's nobody in history that gave what Mab Hussein gave, lined up his family one by one. One by say, one. This is what it takes for them to stay alive, and then take them one after the other. Yeah. And and he the, said that. You know that it really, as you say, it does emulate the, the selflessness and the qualities that our Ahlul Bayt did possess. Yes. And that is why you know, the sacrifice of Imam Hussein is, is uh, instilled in us as the greatest of all time. Mm -hmm. it's the, he's the greatest martyr of all time. And this is why the ziyarah of Imam Hussein is also very highly you know, um, recommended in our mm -hmm. madhab. Yes. Because a man who gave everything, everything for the religion, and now we see that everyone and everything was to him now that you know he has this um he's he's given everything for us and you know yeah. that's why i think our you know our madhab really really has the emphasis of the ziyarah of Imam Hussein yeah Hussain. i mean and and beautifully said and what also is interesting about the ziyarah of Hussein alayhi is that you know if if, we, if you've been to karbala and or uh, if your uh, mother or father you know our really old uh, folks when they do come to karbala like back in the day 
they narrate, like my, my father and his and my grandfather, na they, they narrate stories that people, as soon as they entered the shrine of Imam Hussain al Fadl Abbas alayhi salam, their hajat was granted. This is not something, you know, to, to, to joke around with or, you know, just to make up. People were filled with, with pure hearts. They had pure hearts. And inshallah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, give us pure hearts when, that when we go in the shrine of Imam Hussain, we have one thing in mind, and that's seeking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and beseeching Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the rights of this individual that we're visiting, whether it's Al Abbas, alayhi salam, Imam Hussain, uh, Zainab, you know, Zainab in Sham is just beautiful, uh, or Ma'ali Ali Talib, or any of the infallibles, is that, you know, submitting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to them because they in, in their hands have the fulfillment of our wishes and our desires and uh, you know i ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant everyone i mean have have you been to karbala uh, brother muhammad yes alhamdulillah I've how many times um, four times alhamdulillah how many oh, four oh mashallah four times and uh, you know uh, just for the last bit what were your experiences how did you feel the, you know, the first time, walk us through from the first time, uh, what was your feeling when you just entered and you seen the shrine of Imam Hussain alayhi salam? I think it's, you, you often see and you hear about experiences. I think the, the one thing about the land of Karbala and the shrines of, the, of al Abbas and Imam Hussain alayhi salam, everybody has a different, a different feeling. Everybody looks up to the individuals in a different way as yeah. we say that they came and they had so many different messages that everybody one person may look at them and see brotherhood one person may look at them and see loyalty what you know i think that the, the main thing is that when you enter everybody has a different a different feeling and goes through a different set of emotions myself i went to najaf and i felt um like I was very proud to be Shia of Amir al Mu'mineen. You know, there was there was a proud feeling. But when you enter Karbala and you see the shrines of Abu Fadl Abbas and Imam Hussein, the feeling is one of somber and and deep grief. And you know, you really feel undeserving of being in such a holy place. Yeah. You you question why you've been called because because let's not yeah. let's not be mistaken. It is an invitation. Those that are not it called. Is will never make it to the land. Yes. You know, you hear of stories of people who, you know, who try time after time, who don't who don't make it there. But it, it truly is an invitation. And we pray that we all granted this invitation, inshallah. 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 But, you know, it, you really feel undeserving of this holy place. And you really question yeah. and you look inside as to why, you know, you were called and what is it? What quality, yeah. what trait yeah. was it something I did? And it was then you know you really want to know what it was that you can continue this trip to real you know keep coming back to visit imam mm. hussein and Fadl abbas and the other companions who are buried there yeah it really is a feeling of you know uh questioning and and deep reflection it is it is and you just feel like it, it's uh, it's a it's a sense of tranquility uh, within the heart you just relax you know it's really it's uh, unspeakable love you know when you try uh, to talk about it you, you all of a sudden get emotional uh, when you do talk about Karbala uh, and uh, the visit to Karbala and as you mentioned you need that invitation from Imam Hussain and the, the hero right behind me uh, very beautiful scene uh, I'm, I'm actually honored uh, to be in this seat right now on the moon of Bani Hashim and the beautiful inserts that our, our, our wonderful cameramen uh, are trying their best uh, to provide you with and we do thank you very much uh, brother Muhammad Taqi for joining us tonight hopefully we can uh, discuss more uh, in the upcoming shows uh, so we do thank you once again uh, and respect the viewers thank you very uh, thank you very much we're not even done yet uh, but no we're gonna go into a short break uh, and uh, we'll be back very shortly uh, to talk about a little bit more and we do have another special guest for you so do stay tuned don't go away <coughs> Niki maran zome ye alwan Gara köy nah ki yaran Ki maran zome ye alwan Gara köy nah ki yaran Har mahar ram da parishan Gara köy nah ki yaran Ki yaran karo libas 
کسی جزرم حسین نزاسی سیخا کاش حریب دم الله جویا یا حسین صداسی جویا یا حسین صداسی کرم کرم باسی جزرم حسین نزاسی سیخا کاش حریب دم چابچی کی بلاخومین امت پیغام برادین چابچی کی بلاخومین Respected viewers welcome back uh, these beautiful images that you were just presented with uh, are from the holy city of Karbala uh, and uh, the most beautiful scenes uh, we just had uh, an interview with Muhammad Taqi a poet from the UK uh, and uh, he mentioned something very emotional uh, regarding Karbala, uh, honestly, when you want to come to Karbala, you have to have that intention. Uh, you have to have uh, a certain wish within yourself to come to Karbala with a pure heart. Because as the narration tells us, when you approach the shrine of Allah, approach him with tranquility. Approach him with humility and humbleness. Because when you enter that shrine, you know, the only if, if there was one individual on this planet that needed to, you know, raise his head high, high enough that no one can, you know, raise it as high as him, it's Imam Hussain alayhi salam. For the sacrifices he gave, for everything that he did for us and for humanity, he is the only one that should rise or, you know, keep his head high, which he, he is. But for us, we need to be in the mood of humility and humbleness as we enter the shrine of the two kings of Karbala and uh, to remember uh, to, to, to remember uh, everything that they have given uh, to us and to humanity we do have uh, brother Zakaria Abbas uh, from uh, Bangalore India representative of who, uh, who is Hussein in India uh, on the line with us alaikum brother Walaikum brother my brother my, my greetings and salutations Zakaria, to salamun the alaykum. viewers of Imam Hussain TV. Wa alaykum as -salam. Habibi Zakaria, how are you? I'm fine, I'm fine brother. We are, in, we are very much attached to your television and watching your shows. Allah salamkum inshallah. Yes, yes. Allah Now, I, I know that uh, you're, you're very busy with the majalis. Uh, to begin it off, how... how are you guys commemorating the nights, uh, the, the, the few nights uh, of Muharram? How are you commemorating them uh, in, uh, in India, specifically in Bangalore? Yes, so I must say Bangalore is one city in India yeah. where we have over thousands of people who attend majlises. Yeah. Okay, and we have majlises which go on throughout the day and night. Yeah. And apart from that, we also want to convey the message to the non Muslims. Of course. When we have give the sabil to the passerbys and when the passerbys when the passerbys ask us why are we doing this yeah. we say we want to commemorate the martyrdom of imam hussein of through his right message of love and compassion definitely now i know uh, inshallah in a, in, a, in a few weeks time uh, you are holding a very huge event uh, under the name of imam hussein hussein day uh, that really uh, talks about everything inshallah in the upcoming nights we'll yes. get to talk about uh, more of uh, what this in uh, this event is uh, and how uh, you're planning for yes. that but uh, why is it important I, tonight we're talking about uh, representing Imam al Hussein and representing Islam but specifically Imam al Hussein alayhi salam yes. now in your opinion why is it important I know you're representative you're the representative of who is Hussein in, in, in India so you kind of have that burden on your shoulders 
of representing that name Hussein. Yes. Um, yes. Now, why is it important to properly represent Imam Hussein in global communities? Yes. Looking at what's happening around the world as of today, you'll see in Iraq, Syria, Yemen, US, UK, and Paris, wherever there's a terrorist activity, terrorism is linked with Islam. Right now, there are two perspectives of Islam. The negative Islam, which has been highlighted, yeah. but somewhere or the other, the true perspective of Islam is hidden. Yeah. And that responsibility comes up to the youth. Of we course. need to come up in the forward and, and convey the real message of Islam through the tragedy of Karbala. Beautiful. The tragedy of Karbala is one incident in the history which speaks about a brother-brother relationship, wow. a brother-sister, a father-son, a friend and companion. Imam Hussein's message was not just for Muslims. Yeah. I remember his quote saying, when he was covered with arrows, he said, if you don't believe in any religion or the resurrection day, at least be free in this world from tyranny wow. and arrogance. Beautiful. This one message speaks about that this message of Karbala was not just for Muslims. He, in fact, in the Shodahai Karbala, we had representatives from the Christian community, the Jews. Wow. And we all know the famous incident of Wahhabi Kalbi, how he yeah. was mesmerized by the personality of Imam Hussein. So this, if people understand the tragedy of Karbala, they will understand Islam is about sacrifice, Islam is about non-violence. But somehow, this has been hidden by the propaganda it forces has. of the superpowers and a few Muslim nations. And also to let you know about India. Yeah. India, we have so many religions coexisting. Yeah. And the father of our nation, Mahatma Gandhi Ji, yeah. We, we all know he got us freedom from the British rule for over two centuries. Wow. Mahatma Gandhi has quoted, I learned from Hussein to achieve victory whilst being oppressed. Wow. And also the first Beautiful. president of India, Dr. Rajinder Prasad has said that the sacrifice of Imam Hussein is not limited to one country or nation, but it is the hereditary state of the brotherhood of all mankind. Wow. So right now, the youth should come forward and approach people in a very positive way and speak about the tragedy of Islam, which is the crux yeah. of the Islamic history. Yes. If people believe in this event, this tragedy of Karbala, they will not link Islam to terrorism. How do we do that? We do it with tolerance and patience. Yes. Most of us tend to get agitated when we indulge in debates with people, but we need to show the real principles of Islam through our character. We need to be tolerant and patient. And that's how I feel it's very important to represent Imam Hussein in the global community. Yes. I mean, uh, when, when we talk about representing Imam Hussein in global community, um, you know, we, we, do, we yes. do it together. You know, I know with uh, yourself in India, you do it with, with a team. Uh, now, Muslim yes. Na'atil, yes. Muslim Na'atil, yes. 1400 yes. years ago, he yes. represented Imam Hussein in Kufa alone, although he had thousands of, of yes. companions when he arrived. But... As yes. the days passed, he was the only one defending the message of Islam in Kufa. The only one. Yes, yes. In you know fact, what I mean? Yes. Now, Muslim Ibn Akhil is that example for the youth that we should not shy away from religion. Now, my he question, was a man of principle, loyalty, yeah. sacrifice, courage. Yeah. Now, and through his actions, uh -huh. he established the fact that the uprising of Imam Hussein and power or not for world longing. Yeah. The motive of Imam was that reverberated in the heart of his followers, such as Muslim Ibn Akil. He was a complete stranger in Kufa. And yeah. th that talks a lot about his courage and valor. It does. It does. He was exhausted by his troubles. He was heartbroken by the deceit of the so-called followers. And he was also apprehensive of, of the safety of Imam Hussein. Mm -hmm. This was the condition of, about Muslim Ibn Akil. Yeah. Even though he did not compromise on, his, on the way he behaved, he was a true example of the, the representative of Imam Hussein and Islam during the, the worst situation and scenarios. Yeah, yeah. His patience. We need to learn to make a firm content, change ourselves, our religiosity, our characters, and our etiquette. Yes. And yes. that is what Imam Muslim Ibn Akhil teaches us. He is an example of tolerance and is the best example of the beginning of the uprising of the tragedy of Karbala. Mm -hmm. And that's beautifully said. Now, is it safe to say that the, the, the last words, is it safe to say that Muslim Aqid set the standards for representing Imam Hussein? Of course, of course. If we, if we read about the history, Hazrat Muslim Aqil was the first representative chosen by Imam Hussein. Yeah. That itself talks a lot about his position in the history of Islam. He was chosen by Imam Hussein. 
he was trustworthy yeah. and he was sent all alone where people invited them and later the followers deceded them yeah the imam muslim ibn akhil was alone in in a land where there was no one yeah. he had to face thousands of followers who were ready to get biased and and kill imam hussein alaihi salam yeah. even there he showed his act of bravery and courage yeah. he has set the standard of imam hussein stand in karbala yeah. and it's a very tragic incident in the history of islam that muslim ibn akhil stood up all alone as a complete alien and a stranger inshallah i mean it's 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 beautifully well said uh, by yourself there inshallah yes. we'll get to talk about more uh, on this topic and representing Ahsan Islam, islam but inshallah yes. in a different episode or in a different show thank you very much Habibi Zakaria uh, yes. from Bangalore India we do thank you very much uh, for joining us tonight thank uh, you so much thank Habib, you so much Habib Zak inshallah inshallah see you soon thank and talk you so to you much. soon uh, now respective yes. viewers uh, we're gonna go into a short break and we'll be back very shortly uh, to conclude our late night talk uh, for tonight, uh, so do stay tuned. Respected viewers, welcome back. Uh, the footage you were just presented with uh, were uh, from a few nights ago, the banner exchange of the Holy Shrines of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Abu Salah Abbas. Uh, they were changed from red to black. If you didn't uh, see that uh, due to work or your circumstances, um, uh, we do have a show uh, on YouTube for that night. Uh, and honestly, it's, it's tragic to witness the last moments or the last seconds uh, of the rest of the year and then entering Muharram and then the banner exchange uh, and uh, you know everyone just this year uh, it's, 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 it's crazy you know a, a lot of people have come to Karbala you know millions of people reached Karbala on the first of Muharram uh, and uh, for me I haven't witnessed that uh, before uh, but inshallah you know we, we get to increase uh, every single year coming to Karbala and coming to Imam Hussain alayhi salam and lastly I would like to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the ability to continue serving Ahlul Bayt continue the message of Ahlul Bayt and represent Imam al Hussain in the best way possible because honestly he is our savior and he is the person who we really need to look up to thank you very much wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh